Hey, what's up guys? Jason back. I wanted to show you a little bit around the bar. This is one of the biggest things that people are concerned with. They want to know like what's going on behind the bar. I wanted to show you just kind of the basic areas and all the main basic tools that you're going to have. And the main thing to remember is that you're going to go through like a three, four, five, seven day training period where they're going to show you where all this stuff is. Well, they'll show you how to open and how to stock and how to prep and how the computer works and how you close and clean and put stuff away. Remember that every bar is completely different that you work at. But that being said, just kind of want to give you a basic once around so that you don't feel like you're a complete newbie and you don't know what the hell is going on. So this is a basic setup that you're going to have at most any bar. This is a well. So this little well setup that you'll see here is where you're making drinks. And usually bars will have a couple different bar stations. This is the front one. You'll notice there's one in the back here. That's the service well. The service well usually makes drinks for the establishment, whereas a front well will make the drinks for the people at the bar. But they're not exclusive to just that. This person back here could jump up front and help somebody up front. Likewise, this person can help the guy that's making the drinks to go out on the floor if they get behind and it's really busy. So at your wells, you'll have your bar mat, all your tools, then underneath that, you'll have your ice pit. Off to the side of these, you'll have a soda gun. So soda guns, real common tool. There's a few different manufacturers of these things, so they could be a little bit different at your bar. The buttons are all pretty obvious in what they are. They usually just say Sprite, Coke, Diet, Water, letters for you know, root beer or whatever they'll have. O for orange, so it's pretty self-explanatory. All your sodas, but also can have juices, can also have pre-mixed cocktails. It just depends. Like your managers can set these things up to be wherever they want, and they'll train you on exactly what is on these buttons. Now, some of these are big, and you'll have buttons like maybe down to here. So if you get to your bar and you got a bunch of buttons on your gun, don't freak out. The more stuff you have on here, the better. A little bit more to learn up front, but as soon as you get it figured out, just gonna mean that you're gonna be that much faster when you're working behind the bar. So there's your soda gun. You have your bar mat here, you'll have your tools, your garnish trays, your sugar salt rimmers, and whatever tools that you might need at hand, your soda guns. Then back here, this is your speed rack or your house well. Now basically what this is, is these are cheap alcohols. They'll call them well drinks, well alcohols. Just means basically it's the cheap stuff that your managers get on discount from the liquor distributors or they can be common alcohols that you pour quite often. This is Hornitos, this is 1800, those are generally not well alcohols, but they're just really commonly poured here. These things just depend on your bar. Uh, this is five bottles, I've seen these things six, eight, 10, 12 bottles wide. You'll see them two tiers deep, you'll see them three tiers deep, or huge long speed racks. You'll notice there's another one down here that has other alcohol stored. This is similar to two tiered, speed rack but it's just mounted over on the wall you can have this on the front of a well so it really just depends it's just ease of access these are your different mixing juices so you can have lime juice orange juice cranberry juice pineapple juice pina colada mix whatever these are going to be in a separate tray so you don't want to have these sitting in the ice these need to be clean and off to the side but they're staying chilled so this is okay. You'll usually have an ice scoop. You might just use your mixing tin to scoop your ice. Always make sure that your ice is clean. If you break glass or spill anything in there, then you need to burn the ice, meaning that you scoop it all out, pour a bunch of hot water in there, wipe down the whole inside, and then put fresh ice in there. So it sounds like a pain in the ass, and it is. And I call that a Chinese ice drill when you break a bunch of glass in there in the middle of a busy shift. Good times but you'll definitely do that. It's just part of your initiation. So everything, as you can see, is real close. Glass racks are up where you can get them. Pitchers, back area, you'll notice is real similar. Speed rack, this one's a little bit longer. So you have a longer speed rack, more alcohols. There can be speed racks down the side. I mean, it's just depends on how the bar is set up. Glassware, again, all within reach. Very close. Then you'll usually also have a 
a refrigerator. Nice cold glasses when you're pouring pints. Then also various mixes and juices, garnishes, olives, stuff that you would need on a consistent basis in your bar. You're gonna have your bar mats, right? So this is where you make, primarily where you make most of your drinks. You don't wanna be walking around in space because you're usually making a couple drinks at a time and this just makes sure that you don't make a mess all over the damn place. This is your shaker tin and your mixing tin. Now, usually you're just gonna have a mixing tin. Shaker tin is just another one that's slightly smaller that fits over the top so that you can shake cocktails in. It's also common to just use a regular beer pint glass so you can just shake that on there. There's another really easy way to do it. Either way, this is just designed to put ice and your ingredients in there to shake and chill the drinks. You need to get the liquids out of there, but you want the ice to stay in there. So this is a strainer. So it fits firmly on the top and then it just strains the liquid out so the ice stays in there. Next we have a bottle opener. So you'll have a multi-tool bottle opener, pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna use this to open bottles of wine. You can open beer bottles with this. You're also usually gonna have like bolted to the wall, a place where you can open beer bottles. Another type of bottle opener is called a church key. So this is the flat, long one that you'll see bartenders have in their pocket and they pull it out. They're like flipping around their finger, doing a bunch of cool tricks, opening up beer bottles 100 miles an hour. Some bars will have these for the bartender, some bars will not. If you don't have these, then you can just ask your beer or liquor distributors. As you can see, this one's from the Cuervo guy. So they're always coming in trying to get you to sell more of their stuff because then they make more money. So just ask them like, hey, you guys got any of those flat church key bottle opener things? And they've probably got a box of them in their truck. And just keep one of those things in your pocket because it's just fast and efficient. So you could have a jigger in your bar. You might also just have a shot glass. Hopefully you're working in a bar where you can just be free pouring so that you don't have to stop and slow down and use your measuring tools because it's just at best slowing you down. And at worst, it hurts your tips because people don't like to see these. Just, they feel kind of like they're getting ripped off. Have you ever had a drink made with a shot glass with a little jigger? You're like, come on, man, just, just put some booze into that thing. So you, you feel a little bit like you're getting ripped off. So hopefully you'll be able to work somewhere where you can just do free pouring. But if not, then that's the point of a jigger or a shot glass. Then you have your sugar salt rimmer. So this is designed to put sugar, salt, um, you know, whatever your managers want onto the rim of a glass. So you basically just take a glass. This is a foam pad. So you get the little foam pad wet in the water. Then you put a little lime juice in there and that'll make the rim of the glass sticky. And then you coat it with salt, sugar, whatever. Then you'll also have garnish and straw trays. So pretty basic. You'll have straws and napkins, tall straws for tall drinks, short straws for short drinks. Remember generally the rule is if it has ice, give it a straw. No ice, no straws. Garnish trays, so garnish trays can be filled with whatever fruit that they want. Uh, lemons, limes, oranges, cherries, whatever your bar has. Remember they'll tell you what they have, pineapple slices. Your glassware in a bar usually stocked up high, so they're stacked up here, or they can be hanging from the ceiling, as you'll see like this. Usually they're very close by. You want to make sure your glassware is always sparkling clean. Never serve a cocktail in a dirty glass. Then there's the blender. So this is for blended drinks, and you want to make sure that when this is on there, that it's you hold it down, flip the switch on. And making sure to hold it down because these things will get crazy. You don't want to shake them because they're not like locked on there real tight. They're designed to be fast on and off. So make sure you kind of put your hand on there. I will put my hand on there and start it and then once it's kind of going and I can feel that it's solid, then I'll walk away and work on some other drinks. But generally you want to make sure that you have your hand on here when you start it and make sure that the lid is in place. Never blend a drink without a top on it. And you could have larger size. This is a pretty basic one, and you could have bigger ones, smaller ones. A really common question that people have is like, how much ice do I put in the blender for a cocktail? 
A real easy way to do this is just to take the glass that you're going to make a drink into, fill it full of ice. So nice and full of ice. And then pour that into your blender. Now, right about where that is, you want to make note of it, or you can maybe even take a little pin and mark that. Right, that is how much ice you need for one drink. So now, the next time that you need to make a blended cocktail, you don't have to like scoop and measure it out. You can just fill it with your ice scoop or your mixing tin right into your blender, right up to that line, and now you'll know that's one drink. You can do this with tall glasses. If you want to know how much ice for two drinks, take another glass roll full of ice, put it in there, so right up, right to there, and just Mark it, take a little pin. A lot of times the blenders in your bar will already be marked. If not, put a little nick on there, a little permanent marker. They're not gonna care, not a big deal. Those are your blenders. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's the basics around a bar. And remember, you're gonna be trained on all this stuff. So don't feel like you have to know exactly where everything is in a bar. That's absolutely absurd. Even if you've been a bartender for like 800 years, they're gonna have to train you. They're gonna have to show you what all this stuff is and exactly what you have and how you set it out and how to use it. All right, so that's it for now. I'll see you next time.